guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna look at some more raised beds. Uh, so this is part two, we did part one a while ago. These are all pictures and information submitted by you guys and they're from all over the place. It's so fun to look at all the different setups and we have several that we're gonna look at today. So I'm just gonna jump right into the first one, which is from Kaylin in Ohio, zone six. Oh, look at that. Okay, so right away, you notice the obvious, the black fence, the black arbor. Boy, that makes the space look unified. Well, I love that because, you know, I've got a black fence and black arbors around ours and I absolutely love it. It just frames it, makes it feel like a room. So Kaylin says she's inspired by our vegetable garden that we have. Uh, they built their raised beds out of cedar and there are some before pictures here. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Just two raised beds sitting out there in the grass and compared to what it looks like now. There's one where the fence is in, two raised beds. Those two, it looks like the original two have been planted in, but three more were added. And she did say they eventually had three four by eight raised beds for veggies and then added two uh, two by four beds for cut flowers. And she said that they put, when they um, filled up the raised beds, they added uh, topsoil, biotone starter fertilizer, land and sea compost, and mushroom compost and had amazing results, which is awesome to hear. We've had good, really good luck using a lot of those amendments. Oh, there's another backed up picture with all the beds, but no arbor. I really like that. Is that a, what kind of tree is that? Is that like a service berry or something or choke? cherry I don't know it's really pretty <laughs> blooming right there up front oh my oh front view front view is awesome so the bed around it they added a no dig fence after a groundhog groundhog took some blueberry bushes um, and then an arbor was added to the front gate for morning glory and pole beans and this year they're looking to add a perimeter garden and they got a uh, good start with two free hydrangea standards off of Facebook Marketplace. Find of the year, I should say so. Nice, Kaylin, love it. Next one is from Kelly in Maine, zone four. Oh, that's a deer proof garden right there. Six feet by eight feet. That looks a lot bigger than six by eight, honestly. Although you can really grow a lot of produce in that amount of space. And the wood is hemlock and was designed with deer in mind as we deal with deer every year is what Kelly says. It was the first year, first time growing vegetables. So I'm gonna go forward here. Okay, so there's a back view and you can see some veggies went in. That's a little bit further down the road right there. Squash plant is huge. Oh, had to take down some sides <laughs> so that the squash could be free. Oh my, look at the produce, beautiful. Great job, Kelly. Next one is from Tiffany in Spokane, Washington, zone 6B. Oh, before picture, okay. So that's a huge lawn. Oh my, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 raised beds in this picture or what the start of them. This is an interim picture here. So not quite the after, but what I notice is that you're not dealing with a lot of things. Like there's a tree, it looks like to the right, but it's not casting shade on this space. It looks like a really nice space to put something like this. It's awesome. And later on, wow, all mulched. And how, are there more beds now? Yeah. And she does say they started, she and her husband started building this garden in 2018. They started with eight boxes and they now have 22, 22 raised beds. Uh, they built them from six foot cedar fence boards with four by four posts in the corners. And then they lined the cedar boards with black plastic to help with longevity of the boards, but it's open on the bottom, like to facilitate drainage. And if the plant roots want to grow down further, they could, um, and they've held up really well which is so good to know because I've often wondered, it is a lot more cost effective, but the boards are a lot thinner. So I wondered how well they would hold up. So it's good to know. Um, most of the boxes measure six by three. The berry boxes are skinnier at six by two. And then there are rhubarb boxes that are three by three. And they filled them up with bulk garden soil from a local landscape company. So it looks like this one is early on in the season, perhaps it looks like onions in there maybe. There's an obelisk in one of them. Oh, and look at this, all filled in, like mid-season. I see marigolds and zucchini. I see dill. You see the dill in there on the left, like fourth box back. Beautiful garden, I love it. Next up is Linda in Anchorage, Alaska, zone three. Oh my goodness. I love this one. <laughs> I love this one so much. Look at the color of the beds the design of just the plants in there. I mean, the urns are gorgeous too in the center, but that's such a unique and different way to plant them up. 
I don't think we've seen anything quite like this. That's so pretty, Linda. She says that growing a garden in Alaska is challenging. Living in a zone three, you never know what type of season you're gonna have, and raised beds certainly help with increasing the warmth of their very cold ground. Um, she says they have a very small postage size postage stamp sized yard and these raised beds were built by my husband uh, and used for mainly for vegetables the size is larger than traditional they're seven by nine and they used pine and painted it with a special exterior non-toxic paint because you know lumber and cedar and those kinds of things can be really expensive the corners are supported with various sized corner edges from gardener supply as the yard is slightly sloped. The beds are designed in a potager English style with sweet alyssum crisscrossing and segregating each section. Peas, lettuce, cauliflower, cabbage, garlic, celery, and squash overflow and flourish in these boxes. My pride and joy was the beautiful graffiti cauliflower from 2020. Oh, that is beautiful cauliflower. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Ah, oh, Linda, I love your style. Gorgeous. Next is Maureen in Wisconsin Zone 5. Oh, another one with some netting or cage material on the top to probably keep animals out, I'm guessing, from snacking on your crops. So it looks like three raised beds there. There's a trellising system in one of them. Let's see some other pictures here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. There's an arbor from one bed to the next. And a, another view from the other side. Dang, is that garlic in there? That's huge. And then one bed that I didn't see before down to the left, maybe with tomatoes growing. Oh, okay, so Maureen said, the three raised beds, each about 30 inches tall, and then one bed, bed that's eight inches tall for tomatoes. Uh, each bed is four by eight, and they are made out of recycled plastic that are made to look like lumber. And uh, she said, my husband insisted on filling the bottom third with lumber and sticks and the rest is raised bed soil. I would never fill the bottom again with anything other than soil. The water just pours out the bottoms. I'm really hoping that's not happen That's not what happens with our cold frame because we put wood at the bottom of ours. So far, everything's surviving in there, but that's what happened to me when I put wood chunks at the bottom of our blueberry galvanized tubs. The water just poured right out. So um, last year, Maureen made an arch from bed to bed to grow honey nut squash on, which is the best, isn't it? It, honey nut mm. and the sides also fold down for better access and helps to keep out animals that want to jump the 30 inches oh that's a really cool setup next up is ashley in ontario canada zone 6a oh another fenced in one a lot of fenced in ones today i love the arches in the arbor I love that look. That's like the Gothic arch kind of detail, especially because look what it's framing. It's framing those beautiful sunflowers. Oh, that's awesome. So the garden is 16 feet by 16 feet. The beds are three feet wide with a three foot path. And then the center bed is four by four. And then the fence in the back is eight feet tall to grow vine crops like cucumbers, which is such a smart thing to do because a 16 by 16 foot garden is pretty good sized garden. But when you have vine crops, they take up such a huge amount of space. So if you can grow them vertically, such a smart way of doing it. And then you have so much more room for other things. Um, the rest of the fence around it, so the sides in the front are four feet, and you can sit on the edges of the bed and just chill and enjoy the garden, which is awesome. Here's a side view with a massive sunflower. She said the sunflowers were volunteers planted by the birds. Looking at you, Erin. <laughs> You're referring to when Erin pulled out the big volunteer sunflowers in front of the gazebo. There's the winter picture. Oh my, that does, well, that provides beautiful structure in the winter, but it also allows us to see really closely what the structure of that whole space looks like. So you can see that four by four bed in the center, and then it's like the whole thing is just surrounded by that three foot wide bed. That's a really awesome space, especially like look at the backdrop, the trees in the back, oh, love that. Next is Carol in South Dakota, zone 5A. Is that concrete? That is a massive, what appears to be concrete raised bed. Oh my goodness. Oh, and this is a before shot. This is when they're working on it. Looks like they tore out some sod. There it is without anything in it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Carol says that it, yes, it is in fact concrete and it's three and a half feet wide and 40 feet long. They handmade the forms, they still have them. They're reusable, they can keep using them if they want. It used approximately three and a half yards of concrete and then they did a stucco finish on the outside. And uh, their soil is an incredibly high clay content, so a raised garden is their best option, which that's a really good reason to do gardening and raised beds. And they have the whole thing on a drip system timer uh, and tremendous yields. So tomatoes, onions, radishes, carrots, lettuce, green beans, zucchini, 
cucumber, strawberries, pumpkins. Oh my goodness. That is so many, well, 40 feet long. I mean, yeah. Oh, look at the monarch on the tomato. Love seeing that too. Now we have Tammy in North Carolina zone 7B. Oh, a terraced garden with a fence around it. I'm guessing deer pressure. Yep, Tammy said deer pressure and her great Pyrenees. <laughs> she said if she let her dog in there, he'd dig every single day if, if she let him. So treated wood for the raised beds. They sit on a slight slope so they are terraced and the fence sits about five feet tall. They're filled with organic compost mix from a local nursery and their growing season is 10 months long. That's such a long growing season. So she grows things like lettuce, peas, garlic, and carrots in the cooler months, and then tomatoes, peppers, green beans, zucchini, squash, and herbs in the summer. Also, uh, cucumbers are on the cattle panel trellis. The trellis is a game changer, creating a vertical gardening surface and easy harvesting. There is a pollinator garden next to the raised bed garden. They have tons of beans and butterflies. And the bounty there in the basket. That's great, Tammy. Tons of fenced in gardens this time. Next up is Mary in Illinois, zone 5B. Okay, so this is an in construction shot right here. That's massive. Is that just one raised bed? It looks like the bottom is lined with hardware cloth. Let's go forward. Oh, nope, we got some individual raised beds there. So there's like a real long one there on the left in the middle, some larger square, and then some smaller on the right hand side there. Ooh, it's interesting to see this take shape. So there are walls. You can see the door kind of on the right hand side, the far right hand side there. Oh, and look at that. Boy, that looks different. Once it's all fenced in and there's stuff inside. Doesn't that just, don't you just wanna go in that? Just walk in there just to see what's going on. I see a huge pumpkin there being cradled by some netting. Oh, and look at all those vegetables. I like the pavers with the rocks around it. She did say that she would of course like to have made it a little bit bigger, but budget and then the time allowed that she had to take care of it were prohibit prohibitive, um, but she's really happy with the size of it because it makes her really creative with the things that she wants to grow. Um, and I think that's awesome. Next up is Darlene in New York zone 6A. Okay, well I don't see vegetables in this one, but it is a raised bed and it's gorgeous. Look at the stone, you guys. Erin and I have talked so many times about wouldn't it be beautiful to have brick raised beds or stone raised beds. Look at this, because they are gorgeous. And of course, they'll last forever. But we've got ornamental grasses in here, Japanese maple, perennials. Let's take a look at the next picture. This is earlier on in the season. You can see the arbs there really well. Their bird bath, there's some daffodils blooming and the low, low ground cover evergreens. A little bit later on, dang, boy, does that look beautiful. The layering and the color and the texture here, absolutely gorgeous. So in that back corner, the three arms kind of creating that trio and kind of that framework. And then right in front, you've got a Japanese maple surrounded by some type of juniper. There is a list, so we'll take a look. There's a blue spruce to the left, which provides that really cooling kind of spot for your eye. Um, some kind of green evergreen there on the left and then the two grasses on the corners. You can see on the right hand side by that grass, there's a black lace elderberry. Also daisies, dichondra silver falls kind of cascading over the front of the stone. And then just a beautiful mix of looks like pale yellow, purple, um, and then a brighter yellow flower in there. Wow. Wow. And in the winter time, oh, look at the structure. That structure is gorgeous. So Darlene said that she started this garden more than 20 years ago using tumbled Pennsylvania blue stone. Um, it is my view when I sit in my favorite chair in my family room and I, she wanted it to be attractive 12 months out of the year. Well, you nailed it. <laughs> it's beautiful. So the trees in here, Wichita blue juniper, Hinoki cypress, dwarf globe blue spruce, emerald green arborvita, and then the Japanese maple. The shrubs here are Russian cypress, icy blue juniper, blue star juniper, blue rug juniper, black lace elderberry. The perennials here are ornamental grasses, Shasta daisies, phlox, and peonies. And then there's a whole bunch of different um, annuals in there. Well, that was fun to see a little bit of a, a shift there, but it is a raised bed and it's full of gorgeous things. Next is Erin in Wisconsin zone five. So Erin has the YouTube channel Impatient Gardener. And I know a lot of you guys probably follow her are already. If you haven't, you should. She is just really fun and super knowledgeable and has a gorgeous garden. So let's take a look. Actually, she included a video, which is so nice. Now this also is a fenced in space because of deer pressure, but look in here, got the water garden in the middle. 
and the whole setup. I like the whole design. So it's a 50 by 40 foot fenced area to protect from deer. Um, it has eight four by eight foot beds and four two and a half foot by five foot beds uh, that are used for cut flowers. Erin's favorite feature is the height of the beds, which I have to agree, 21 inches high. Less bending over, much more comfortable, easier to reach the middle of the beds. Uh, it's something that I can see us doing at some point here, building up our raised beds a bit. Um, so they were constructed from four by four lumber, which is another thing I really like about her raised beds because they do look substantial. Um, they're cedar for the bottom course and then untreated pine for the remaining courses. Um, the inside of the beds were treated with Timber Pro internal wood stabilizer, a non-toxic waterproofer, and the outsides are stained. And each of the beds were filled with a bulk raised bed mix from a local nursery. She's used the Hugo culture approach for raised beds in the past, but chose not to this time because she didn't want to worry about excessive soil settling and therefore needing to top up with a lot more soil, which is, yeah, definitely something to think about. Espaliered fruit tree there. Erin, just gorgeous as always. Now we have Carolyn from Massachusetts zone six before shot. Okay, so this is a winter shot. No leaves on the trees at this point. Lawn there and a border. Oh. Whoa, what a great use of that space. Okay, so what I wanna know is, is there a orchard there to the left, like a little mini orchard, and then the raised beds to the right, love the arbor with the urns and the bench in the back. Okay, so Carolyn said she moved to a new home and chose an unused side yard to build her new garden. Uh, I had just purchased the garden beds when the lockdown in March 2020 happened and suddenly found herself with a lot of free time. Spent the next few weeks transforming the blank space. I removed the old overgrown forsythia bushes and all the grasses and assembled the beds. The beds are composite, the same ones she had pur purchased five years earlier for her previous garden, so she already knew that they held up really, really great. I uh, laid down landscape fabric, pea gravel, and some old stepping stones between the rows and mulched the sides. Thank goodness the local nurseries were still delivering. And then filled the beds with compost and veggies that she had started indoors. There are five fruit trees, blueberry and raspberry bushes, and later sunflowers, corn, and squash line the mulched areas on each side. The trellis in the back is made from PVC pipe and welded wire holds climbing vegetables. The biggest lesson I have learned from years of watching Garden Answer is the importance of good soil, water, and fertilizer. Yes, as you can see by the overflowing beds, it has made the difference. Look at that, you guys. See the corn and squash in the back, and then there's a fruit tree there. Oh my goodness, it makes me so excited for things to start growing faster. Look at that corn, looking gorgeous. Oh, love it, Carolyn. Next up, we have Cindy in Louisiana, zone 8A, nope, 8B. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh, look at that space, you guys. That's big. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna go a next picture. I wanna see, oh, interim shot. It's fun to see the background. This looks like winter time. Everything, all the leaves are gone off the trees. Those are some pretty good size raised beds too kind of at the beginning of the growing season when everything still looks so fresh and it looks tidy, like all fitting within its space. Usually by the end of the season, our raised beds are just spilling over, like things are just coming out of the raised beds. But you can see the cattle panel trellis there. Um, there it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten beds that I can see right here. There may be more than that. Okay, so Cindy said they made their garden on an old garden site that they leveled with a tractor and then the wood was they used were rejects from a local sawmill. Uh, she said she found us, an, um, us a garden answer in August and planned all winter long. She had been composting all year. She put the wooden frames in place, opened to the native soil on the bottom and filled with her own compost and then added some potting soil to improve the texture. Uh, beds are three feet wide, which I think is a really manageable size, by the way. Four feet for me would be a little bit too wide. I wouldn't be able to reach to the other side. Three feet's perfect because I can sit on one side and reach all the way over. And it's really not a big deal. I mean, you can get up and go to the other side, but sometimes it's nice to do everything from one side. And walkways are four feet wide. She put cardboard on the paths and then pine bark mulch on the top and occasionally tills around the perimeter to keep the grass from getting in. And it kind of makes a ditch, which also helps with drainage. Um, she studied a bunch on companion planting and planted some flowers to keep the bugs out. Um, and they were able to grow more vegetables than they could eat and shared with their family and friends. So she has a, have a page on Facebook called The Cottage Garden. 
It's a beautiful space. And the last one for today is Melanie in Tennessee, zone 7A. And the only information here is that she said her elevated raised beds are planted with a combination of vegetables and flowers to provide pollination and visual interest. So we get to just enjoy the pictures here. Look at all the color. There's a lot of interesting things I can see going on here. Hanging baskets, I love the patio lights. Patio lights just make any space cozy. Um, there's a lot of different interesting like repurpose like that old wash tub like the standing one is that what they're called or a wash basin um, there are elevated raised beds with some type of arbor trellis which would be handy in a lot of different ways there's a little cart in the center that looks like it's spilling over with some type of pink flower probably a, a petunia i'm guessing a bench in the back let's take a look at the next picture yep closer up of the old wash basin and then the two rectangular planters that's a really great way to use rectangular i'm always looking for ways to use rectangular planters because i have a hard time really figuring out a good spot to put them where it really makes sense but this makes a little wall for the bench that you have sitting in front of it which i love and you've got boxes in there which are winter interest so you have a wall year round and you can see that there are those look like a super tunia vista fuchsia on the cart in the center oh there's a close-up of it Dang, that is so colorful and bright. And Mandavia on some trellises, it looks like. And there's some zinnias and marigolds. You can see your arb hedge looking great. A bench with some bee pillows. My mom has those pillows, <laughs> those bee pillows. I love that. What an interesting space. There's just so many different ideas going on here, which I love. I love to walk through gardens that just, they feel like whimsical, which is what this feels like to me. Just looking at the pictures, there's just so many interesting, unique things going on. Really like that, Melanie. And that is it for today's video, part two of Raised Beds. Thank you again to all of you who sent out pictures and information. I know it takes a lot of time to gather up all of that information. And also, thank you for allowing us to share it with everybody else. I know it's kind of a vulnerable thing to open up your private space and share that with everybody who's watching these videos, but just know that it's so inspiring and so encouraging and motivating to see everybody's spaces and we get such good ideas from each other and learn from each other. And I think that's so such a valuable thing. In the next submission video, we would love to feature sheds. And I'm not thinking like greenhouse type areas, like not growing situations, we'll do that later on. And not necessarily like storage, I'm talking like maybe a space that you have out in your space like kind of what we're thinking for our cut flower garden shed so this is kind of a selfish video for myself because i'm hoping to get lots of really fun ideas on how we can set that up but maybe somewhere that you've um kind of fixed it up to where it's a really sweet spot to sit and relax and enjoy your garden um, it can include some t uh, tool organization things like that i mean it can be practical and pretty at the same time so um any sheds that you have like that out in your garden i know a lot of you guys have those types of things we would love to see them we will put a link to the form down in the description of this video and then we will put that together here fairly soon probably on the next uh, crummy spring weather day it's a great thing to do inside uh, when it's yucky outside so thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video